In this video, we're going to talk about the patent application process. That means the process by which an inventor and or his or her attorney applies to the United States Patent Trademark Office seeking to get an issued United States patent. Now this process is commonly called patent prosecution. The first thing you need to understand is that the process of getting a United States patent issued is a long and expensive one. The current figures from the Patent Trademark Office tell us that the average time from a patent application being filed until a patent is either issued or the application is abandoned is 30 months. Now the Patent Trademark Office are doing a lot of things to shorten that period of time, but it's still a lengthy one. It also takes over 18 months on average for the Patent Trademark Office to issue their first office action, that is, their first communication with the applicant discussing whether or not the patent has claims that are actually patentable. The patent application process is also an expensive one. Most law firms will quote in the neighborhood of $10,000, maybe even more, to prepare the initial patent application. And the total cost from application preparation through issuance of a United States patent can easily be twenty-five dollars to $30,000, depending upon the billing rates that the attorney used and the nature of the patent application process, how much communication goes back and forth with the Patent and Trademark Office. Now let's talk about that process in a little bit more detail. Once an application is filed, the Patent and Trademark Office, I'll call it the PTO, reviews it to make sure it's generally complete and that the fees have been paid. Then they assign that application to an examiner. The examiner specializes in that area of technology, so they'll generally be familiar with the subject matter and most times the prior art, the, the public information that's available in that technological space. The examiner will then review the patent and perform a prior art search. That is, searching the public information available related to that technology. And they'll compare that prior art that results from the search with the scope of the claims. In the vast majority of all cases, the patent examiner will reject at least some of the claims in the patent. This is communicated to the inventor and the applicant in what's called an office action. Now the examiner could reject the claims for a number of grounds. Most commonly, it's based upon the prior art. The examiner could say that a claim is rejected because it's not new. That means it would be anticipated under Section 102 of the Patent Act because the examiner found a single piece of prior art, such as a prior patent or scientific journal, that discloses each and every element of that claim, rendering it not new in its entirety. An examiner could also reject a claim because it's obvious. This would be under Section 103 of the Patent Act. Typically, this would mean the examiner has found a single piece of prior art or a number of pieces, pieces of prior art that taken together suggest that a person of ordinary skill in the art would understand how to make the claimed invention such that it's obvious. Another reason the examiner could reject the claim is under Section 112 of the Patent Act. This could be because the language of the claim is unclear and indefinite, or perhaps the examiner thinks that the claim scope is not supported and not enabled by the written description in the patent. That would be the specification, including the drawings that we discussed earlier. Now, the applicant gets this rejection, and they have a couple choices. They can quit and give up and allow the application to go abandoned, or they can respond to it. And they can respond to it by either arguing with the examiner and, and stating that the examiner either doesn't understand the applicant's patent claims or doesn't understand the prior art and is misconstruing that, or the applicant can amend his or her claims. In other words, the applicant could add additional detail to the claims, add elements to the claim to further differentiate the patent claims over the prior art. This narrows the scope of the eventual patent rights but it may allow the claims to issue. Now this process may take place a number of times, but eventually a patent examiner, if they're not convinced that claims deserve to issue, will issue what's called a final rejection. This is a rejection that's based upon the same grounds as a prior rejection. At this point in time, the applicant can appeal that rejection to the Board of Appeals. It could file a continuation application. That would mean a new application based on the original filing, and we'll talk about those types of applications in a subsequent video. The applicant could file something called a request for continued examination, in other words, a request to continue this process with the examiner. 
Or if some of the claims have been allowed by the examiner, the applicant can allow those claims to issue in a patent and then consider pursuing continued examination of the claims that have been rejected by the examiner. When a patent issues, the applicant must pay an issue fee, and then roughly every three to four years during the term when that patent is in effect, the applicant must pay a maintenance fee. And the amount of those maintenance fees increases when each new one is due. A couple of things to keep in mind about the application process. One is that there's something called a duty of disclosure. That means that everyone involved in the application process, including the inventors, the patent attorney, and anyone else substantively involved in the process, must disclose to the Patent and Trademark Office any material prior art that they know about. That means if you know of something that's already in existence that constitutes prior art, and it materially relates to what you're trying to claim in the patent, you need to tell the Patent and Trademark Office about it. You can't hide any prior art. One last thing to keep in mind is that there are some new initiatives at the Patent Trademark Office allowing applicants to speed up this patent application process. For example, there's a process called accelerate examination, and there's another process called prioritized examination. Generally speaking, an applicant can pay an additional fee at the time of application, and if successful with their petition, they can be put on a fast track. Under most of these, an applicant can receive an issued patent or a final rejection within a year. So these may be things to consider if you have the resources to pay these fees and you're seeking to speed up the patent application process. That's a general overview of the patent application process before the United States Patent and Trademark Office.